Welcome back guys to this <coughs> video. Today we're doing again the track from Hack the Box, the CRT track, registered penetration tester. And today's machine is CAP. CAP is also an easy machine, extremely easy machine, extremely easy machine guys, tremendously easy machine, as you will uh, see down the road in this video. So we click on the machine, we spawn the IP address and we get it running. The first thing that we do all the time is the in-map scan. So I got everything ready for you guys here without uh, you to needing to wait for me to type the commands. So as you can see here, I ran the uh, scan against the IP address using the dash a switch. And I've seen several open ports. Among them, we have the 21 for F2P, 22 for SSH, and 80 for HTTP. And as you can see, we have uh, fingerprints information about the web server running, Gunicorn. And here also we have the version of the SSH and the version of the FTP server running. These are information that we need to pay attention to when we run penetration tests. Okay, so long story short, FTP here, it does allow anonymous access, but there is nothing you can find in there. Now, you are left with enumerating SSH and HTTP. Now, SSH, since there is no credentials, and since enumerating the version may take some time to find a relative exploit, so we're gonna hit start with port 80 so we navigate to the web server and we see this uh, dashboard so the dashboard looks like it is uh, a network monitor we have a uh, metrics about the security events the failed login attempts and the port scans and the username is Nathan as you can see here we have a, a couple of functionalities here the messages the settings um, and features on the left panel security snapshot if you click on the security snapshot you will see here um, as you can see take a look at the URL path slash data slash two so if you do click download you will be presented with a pop-up that, that will ask you to download a packet uh, sorry a pickup file the pickup file can be opened with Wireshark if you click on that as you can see we can open the, the uh, you can uh, click on uh, uh, save okay and save the file so this is the pickup file now what's interesting about this url is the structure so slash data slash two now if we want to manually test the application what we would do here we would change the uh, number here try with one try with zero try with three try with four because every number here it looks like it denotes different page so if we try with one we may be we may be redirected to the same page here to, to download um, a different pickup file and view different information and therefore if we are able to do that it means there is an authorization problem in the website in the web application so it leads to either vulnerability or indirect insecure direct object reference okay that's for this IP config displays the IP information of the machine so it's, it's basically executing the IP config on the uh, underlying system but there is no input box here, as you can see. It's only a, it only displays the output. Heading over to network status. Again, we see the output of what seems to be the netstat command. Okay, so network status, IP config are informational. Functionality is on the page. The only thing we can interact with is the snapshot. The snapshot functionality and not through input, bo input boxes. We have to manipulate the URL. Now, you might be asking me why didn't we scan the website with directory search, directory buster, go buster. Um, typically you can do that if you are doing a, a penetration test you have to do that to enumerate the directories and the files but since we're doing CTF we immediately and this is since this is a walkthrough I immediately skip to the working solution. So if you run directory search on the website it's not going to lead anything you can also run automated web scanners like OWASP zap Acunetix. you can also use nisus by the way but um, again these are automated scanners the manual way is to manipulate the URL so what if we try with one if you try with one we are redirected again to a different page if we try with zero we are redirected to the same page here, but as you can see, the number of packets is different. So we got here number of packets to investigate with Wireshark. 
Now, if you head back to one, as you can see, the count for every uh, section, the count is zero. Let's try with three. Now, with three, it redirects me back to the dashboard. So, what this is all means, it means that there is insecure direct object reference um, on couple pages. So, one, two, when the path leads to two, to one, sorry, we can access, as you can see, the page and we can download the file. We're not supposed to download the file because we're not authorized. And zero. So there is authorization problem here. Now, the next course of action, instinctively, is to download the file. So we download the file, and I open the file with Wireshark. So with Wireshark, I go to statistics. I want to see whenever I really open a PK file with Wireshark, guys, make sure to head over to statistics and then open the protocol hierarchy. You want to see a breakdown of the packets by protocol. So that's how you can guide your investigation. So as you can see, the packets, most of the, we can sort them. So 34% 34, 34 of the packets are FTP. The rest are, you know, HTTP occupies 8%. So 8%, sorry. So let's investigate FTP since it occupies the largest percentage among other protocols. So FTP, we can search or we can filter with FTP here. And it is intriguing to investigate a PICA file that has FTP uh, conversations or packets because FTP is a plain text uh, protocol, a protocol that passes information or packets as plain text, which means if a username and password ha have, pa have been passed in the, in the packets or have been uh, recorded in the uh, packet capture, we can view them. So as you can see, we have the username Nathan, and this is the password. Luckily enough, you can use this information to log into the SSH server. And that's the next step where you can achieve the first foothold. Now we are logged in. And what you see here uh, on, on the output, guys, is the output of LinPiece. LinPiece is a, a tool that performs automated privilege escalation enumeration. So if you scroll down to see the, found, the findings of the tool, there is one remarkable uh, statement here. So files with capabilities, the Python here has the capability set UID, which means if we run Python and change the user id to root we will be able to execute system commands as root so how to how to exploit this so we're going to run python as the current user nathan okay so what i did i ran python here as nathan and then i imported the us i changed my user id to zero zero is the user id of root so i was able to do that because Python 3.8 has the capability set UID, which means I can change the user ID using Python. So that's the command we use to change user ID with Python. I can do that because I am privileged. So I changed the user ID to zero and I executed a command, which is bash. What happened, it ended up with giving me shell as root. So that's it, guys. Surprisingly, very easy machine. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next video.